What's going on guys? It's your boy Terabyte Reacts here and welcome to my first ever movie review on this channel. I told you guys, if you guys have been paying attention to my updates, I told you guys that my first movie review on this channel is going to be Avengers Endgame. Now, I've seen this movie two times, but I have a bit of a story to tell you guys um, that led up to this. I never mentioned this before, um, but there's a story to this that amazing. Well, I wouldn't say it's not that much of an amazing story. It's just really what led up to this moment of joy and 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 and, and everything that happened. So um, I haven't started talking about anything yet, so no spoilers yet. But I have to tell you guys a story, right? So a few months ago, when the trailer dropped um for Avengers Endgame. I don't remember if it was the first or the second trailer. Um I had a very very <laughs> it was a weird conversation with my significant other, right? She has never seen any of the movies in the MCU. She's not a comic book fan, right? So, I watched the trailer. I watched the trailer and I was super hyped. Um, super hype. We, I didn't even know the runtime or anything like that about the movie because I wanted to go into the movie as as first. I knew that the movie was going to be about the revenge or trying to get everybody back. Everybody should know that, right? I mean, common sense would tell you that's how this movie is going to go. You just don't know how they're going to get there, but you knew what the movie was going to be about, right? Right? So... Um, so I watched the trailer. I was super hyped, right? So she having no idea. I can't, I, 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 I saw the trailer was super excited, was raising hell in the house. Was like, yo, this movie going to be so hype, bro. Right. And then she came. She was like, what the hell is going on with you? Like, why are you acting like this? And I was trying to explain to her and she's like i'm like i don't understand you i don't understand how are you not a comic book fan in this day and age if if even if you're not a comic book fan how are you not watching these movies how are you not watching the marvel cinematic universe it's like the greatest time to be a superhero fan and she said to me i'm just not a superhero fan i'm gonna tell you guys right now i almost left her that day <laughs> I did. I almost left her. I almost told her to pack her things and get out. <laughs> I, I I literally almost. I I I you know I I lost it. I I lost it. You know. Um. I was like, how? How are you not a comic book fan? How are you not a superhero movie fan? You know. And I'm planning to. Spend my life with you. How? Yeah, it's not that serious. But anyways, I, um, the situation, it got to the point where she said, okay, I'll give it a chance because I see that it's something that you love. I will give it a chance. Okay, so over the past couple of months, she's been trying to watch all of these movies up till Infinity War, right? And she finally watched Infinity War. Like, um, I think she finished watching. She she watched Infinity War because I told her I said you have to watch Infinity War before Endgame comes out, All right? So she make she made a concerted effort to get into it. Now she is one of the biggest. She's planning to buy comic books and all of this other stuff. She's become a bigger geek than I am when it comes on to, to, to comic book lore and all of that good stuff. Right? So she's watched, she's caught up on everything. As I said, it's not an amazing story, but it is a story, right? So I've seen the movie twice. She has went to see it because she's, she's, um, she's Hispanic. So she went to see the movie in her, with, with, um, with Spanish subtitles, um, so she could, cause she doesn't really, she speaks English, but she's not an expert at it. Let, let's just put it like that. She's not an expert at it. She understands it, but I wanted her to go see it in her native language and then 
we go see it together. And I, I went to go see it myself by myself also. And then we went to go see it together. But when, when we went to go see it together, um, we went to this place, right? We went to this place where you can sit down, have dinner. They bring food to you and stuff like that. Right. Um, so, so it was, it was awesome. It's called, um, it's like, it's called like cinema bistro or something, something like that. I don't remember the name of the damn place. Somebody told me about it just recently. And I was like, this would be fun if we go and see together like this, right? We could eat, we could order food and sit there. It's limited seating. It's like a special occasion. Just make a date of it. Right? So went to see it together and oh my God, guys. Um, and this is where the spoilers start. If you, if you are watching this and you still don't know that this is a spoiler review of Avengers, one video here about spoilers. Okay. So let's talk about the movie, man, because I didn't know that I, I mean, this movie, I didn't, I never knew like, this is the first movie in the MCU that I actually cried tears. This movie was very moving, the performances, and I have to give a shout out to Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans, Scarlett Johansson, all of these guys, Mark Ruffalo, all of them delivered really great performances. Um, you know, Chris Hemsworth is just, I mean, off the chain, off the chain. If I'm, if I'm going to start out just giving praise to the actors first, then we're going to start talking about what happened in the movie. Okay, so this this movie really, really reached out to a culmination of everything that we've seen in the MCU so far, all the way back from the first Iron Man movie. You know what I'm saying? Just a culmination of everything, you know? So it's it's just so it's just so good to see something just come full length, come right back around to where it started, you know, and they've made a shit ton of money. So let's get that out of the way. They made a shit ton of money and they're about to, they probably going off of this movie alone. They're probably going to make, they're probably going to make that same money that they made for the last, what, 20 movies. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they're probably going to make that off of one movie and just double up. Right, because this movie is gonna go nuts when it comes down to the box office. I promise you, it's gonna be nuts. The projection is ridiculous already. You know what I'm saying? This is gonna break records upon records upon records. I mean, literally, when we when I was trying to go see this movie, um, a couple days ago, I was trying to go see the movie. I couldn't get seats, so the only seats that were available was at the front of the theater, and just like the worst experience to go watch a movie. Right? I ended up having to see it in 3D the first time I saw it. I had to go see it in 3D. Even I don't like to really watch movies in 3D, but this movie is excellent in 3D. I definitely recommend it. Um, so the way how the movie started, right, with Hawkeye, right, his family, we saw that in the trailer, right? We saw that in the trailer where how it started out with him, um, him with his daughter. We saw that little clip. In, so it started out with that scene of him watching his father, not his father, watching his family um, disappear, turn to ashes, right? Fizzling out, getting thanos right? So very sad in the beginning. We saw that, how he lost his family. So basically, they're basically showing showing you preemptively because we wanted to know what happened, why he wasn't in the last movie, blah, 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 right? So it turns out um, then it moved from that scene, goes into Iron Man in space, you know, remember see seeing him um, taping, that, using his helmet to record those messages that he was sending to Pepper. And him and Nebula is on the ship, you know, Tony's always going to be Tony. Right? He's always going to be Tony. So they're there playing ear football for some weird reason, having trying to have some fun, and the ship is about to run out of oxygen. And it was a sad moment because I actually thought they were going to kill Iron Man in the very, very first 10 minutes of the movie. I thought he was going to die, but because, you know, you can't really go off of the trailers 
for this for this for the um for um for the MCU movies you can't really follow the trailers because they will put things in the trailer intentionally to mislead you to believe something else. So don't take the trailers like heavy heavy heavy. Yes, you're going to see things that will end up in the movie, but a lot of times they will use that to mislead you so as to not spoil you so you go into the movie and see that oh my god, right? So you can have those OMG moments. So um i absolutely loved how they use captain marvel in this movie she showed up like an angel in the sky to rescue tony tony comes home he's mad because you know captain america is always going to be captain america It's always going to be optimistic let's go do this let's do this together right he's always talking about talking like that um true mark of a leader of course you know, always got to be optimistic, see, see and read in between the lines before anyone else can do it, can see the hope, see the light in the darkness. That's good leadership, right? Even when everything seems hopeless, but you know, Tony has been drifting in space for all this time and now he comes home, he looks thin as hell, you know what I'm saying? Because he probably wasn't eating that much, so lost a, a ton of weight. You, I think, I think you, he was on a drip. He was on a drip. They had to put him on a drip. He spazzed out. He literally took his, his um, his heart out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The thing that keeps him alive. He, he, he pulled that thing out and was like, "You go save the world, bro. I'm done. I'm done." So, you know, I'm just putting it in terms, in layman terms here. I'm not. It's not exact quotes here. So you guys, if you guys must have seen the movie, right? So I want to talk about everything that went on in the movie, um, just the highlight parts. I think that f that f those first scenes are very important. Um, Captain Marvel came down. They decided to go find Thanos. They found him on this planet. He was there by himself because the Nebula. Nebula is like he used to always talk about this place. That what he would do after he got all the Infinity Stones and um and went there. Right. So they went there, they found him. And oh, my God, that scene was was really good because he was like he destroyed all the he used the Infinity Stones to destroy the Infinity Stones. He's like it almost killed him. What's done is done. There's no reverse in this because that's they went there to get the Infinity Stones so they can get everybody back. But that didn't happen. He destroyed the Infinity Stones. So. Turns out, freaking <laughs> Ant Man got stuck in 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 the quantum realm, right? We remember that um, he couldn't get him out, so he was there. So he came back after. Um, so there's this five year time skip that happened. So five years after Thor cuts off Thanos' head, it's like it's done. They went back home. Everybody is sad. So five years later, now. They're in this world of everybody. Some people has moved on, but some people can't move on. Um, Hawkeye is now Ronin, as we know. You know, he's got the samurai suit on and new haircut, near new haircut, and everything looking sauce. I like that scene. I like that scene when he was fighting the dude, and it was very fitting too because that's the actor. I don't know if you guys know this, but if you guys have watched, um. I don't remember, what is it, Seven Ronins? I, I don't remember the name of the movie, but it's a movie with Keanu Reeves and this very actor that played that in that scene with with Hawkeye, right? He was, he's the one, Um, he was in that movie, that Ronin movie. So it was very fitting to me because I, I was like, I was there and I was like, I know a lot of people is not going to get that reference. And I know they did they did that on purpose. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you they did that on purpose because he was in that movie. That's why they used him in that scene where it was it, it was kind of like it was kind of like Hawkeye was taking the mantle. You know what I'm saying? Cuz that's that dude is the OG Ronin, right? So, I know a lot of people probably didn't get that reference cuz they probably didn't watch that movie. But that was an awesome movie. I love that movie with Keanu Reeves and the actor. I don't even remember his name, but I know that it's him, right? Um, so that was a very good reference that probably a lot of people didn't get. <laughs> but, you know, I'm me. <laughs> 
anyways so that was very cool scarlet found him because because scarlet um black widow has been trying to find keeping tabs on everybody right so they're still trying to like fight crime and all of this other stuff trying to keep the peace and stuff like that because you know people will always be people <laughs> so you can't you, you you can't stop being a hero because half the world is gone. You still got to be heroes. You still got to protect the innocent and all of this other stuff. So I really dig that. That you that, but Hawkeye went off went off the the railings. He was just killing bad guys, just killing, killing, killing. He's like leaving the scene. He's not arresting anybody. He's just killing everybody. Um, so she had to go f when um, Ant Man showed up. Scott Lang, right? He showed up and was like, yo, I have a way back. Because he came back, he, he come back out of the quantum realm. And he's like, what the hell is going on? So he went to his house to see his daughter. His daughter is all grown up. And he's like, you got to figure out something. So he went back, went to find the facility, the Avengers facility. And um, Captain America was there. They thought it was like, is this? Is this a recording? They're like, nah, this is live. This is the front gate. So they let him in. He's there and he's like, listen, man, we need to figure out a way to get people back, um, build a time machine, whatever. So they went to find Tony. Now we found out that Tony has now has a daughter. This is in the five year skip, right? With Pepper and everything. They went to go see Tony. Tony is still on his bullshit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's like, listen, man, I have a family now. We can't go find Infinity Stones to, to go turn back time or whatever the situation is. And furthermore, it's freaking impossible. There's too many there's too many things that could possibly happen. You know what I'm saying? So Captain Cap is like, so you're not even going to try? And he's like, nah. You know, so. But he got wise, though, and he came around eventually. So, as I said, I don't want to go through the whole bullet bullet points bullet by bullet points i just want to talk about the great things about the movie and how much i enjoyed it but those things though the setup of the movie is what i think is one of the most important things about the movie so that so he came around eventually they built the they built the, the the time machine he figured out a way to navigate time which is like a lot of back um <laughs> back to the future references in this movie of course um a lot of them, lots of great jokes, man. They went to go find Thor because they figured out how to do it. Thor is fat as hell, big ass belly. <laughs> that was hilarious. He was sad, and and you know he's um, it's very fitting too. It's very fitting too um, that the new Asgard is in Norway. That was pretty cool that they did that because we all know it's Norse. Um, it's Norse mythology, right? It's Norse mythology. That's where the, the um, Vikings and all that shit was originated and shit. So um, Norse mythology is, so it was very fitting that they did that, that they put the new Asgard in Norway. That was pretty cool. So, um, so yeah, it came back. They figured out how to go back in time, but they, the idea was to go back to a specific place in time to grab the Infinity Stones, not when... Um, Thanos had them, but to go back to like the New York. So we got to see a lot of flashbacks to to the old movies of places in time where where the test the um the Tesseract, the Power Stone, the Time Stone, all all of the, that good stuff, the Power Stone, all that stuff that we've seen over the course of watching the MCU and watching all of these movies and where they are in time. Back in those movies, went back. Um, they went back in time. And to grab the infinity infinity stones, they and they encountered some, you know, stuff along the way, and it was pretty cool to see. It was pretty cool to see how they handled going back in time, all the funny stuff that happened. Um, I think my favorite moment of them going back in time, other than when, I mean, I like the interaction between. I don't remember her name. I keep forgetting her name. Um, it was good to see Loki again. Um, it was also the interaction between um, the Hulk and, oh my God, I can't remember her from Doctor Strange. I can never remember her name. And I it, and it's right at the tip of my tongue and I can't say it. It's it's crazy. But you guys know what I'm talking about. I've seen, I've seen on the rooftop 
the lady that trained Doctor Strange, right? So that was one of my favorite scenes from when they went back in time. And also there was another scene that I really loved. I don't know, it was very subtle. It was very subtle, but it, I thought we were going to get an elevator fight again. And Cap let, because he wanted the Tesseract, grab the Tesseract, because they had it in the elevator, and he's like, um, they want me to handle the spear from here, the spear, um, um, Loki's spear, or Spectre, or whatever they call it. So he, he'll, so they all looked at him and was like, what are you talking about? And he leaned over and he's like, don't worry about it. Hail Hydra. <laughs> I was like, that is so, that was my favorite moment in the whole time they went back. So they got the Infinity Stones, they came back. Now, I'm going to fast all the way forward to the last hour of this movie, which is absolutely nuts. Um, so when they were back in time, Nebula had some sort of connection with her own self while they were back in time. Um, so they had this sort of shared memory of the past Nebula, the one that loved Thanos, always trying to prove herself to Thanos, right? And our current Nebula, which we know have made major strides with change, right? So they had some sort of strange connection because of they... <laughs> connected to the same wi-fi that, that's what somebody said they're like oh they're connected to the same wi-fi so they have shared memories now so that's how thanos finds out the past thanos the one as who hasn't died yet when they were back in the past that's how thanos found out about what what the avengers were up to they were trying to change what had already happened so he saw everything that happened in the future so he's so that's how he got so he's like he he waited until they got back came back after everybody is so happy that they come back you know um when they came back with all the infinity stones they put it in the in in the in the in the glove the gauntlet whatever you want to call it and the hulk snapped everybody back um the the first indication we had of that was of course hawkeye his wife was calling his phone so we know okay everybody's back or we are thinking at least they're back at that point in the movie. So the last hour of the movie, soon as everybody was happy, shit goes nuts. Thanos attacks the Avengers facility. How many times do we need to see an Aven Avengers facility get decimated, right? Uh again. So the 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 fight is on and the last hour of this movie, man, when I say spectacular, when I say flawless, CG, man, it's a marvel. That's all I can say, man, about the last hour of this movie. It, it's a marvel. It's something to behold. It's a benchmark in movie making. This is a benchmark in movie making. When I say flawless CG, the last hour of this movie, the final battle, flawless I had no faults. I didn't see anything out of place, anything out of ordinary where I could be like, oh, that, that was terrible. You know what I'm saying? Um, could have picked out a few in Infinity War, but in this movie, they polished it down to the very last pixel, man. When I say it's flawless, like I remember in Infinity War how funny Iron Man looks sometimes in his suit. I would look because you knew the suit was going to be CG. It was going to be like it was going to be totally computer, computer graphics, green screened on him. Right. Motion capture. Right. We knew that was going to happen because now his suit is nanotech. So it's not going to be like a physical suit that he walks around in. You know what I mean? It's not going to be like that anymore. So they basically. They have the computer graphics. Well, they don't have to, but. It's better that way. But, I mean, when they talk about movement, you know what I'm saying, in a suit, you know what I'm saying, and it just looks so flawless. Like, I think this is the best. Out of, out of all the times I've seen Iron Man in uh, in one of these movies, I think this is the best um, CG work that they have done with him in the suit. Like, it was flawless. Him, Pepper Potts, even War Machine. Flawless 
CGI, man, like completely flawless. When you're talking about how Thanos, Thanos look way better in this movie. When I said they polished this movie, man, they polished it. They polished it. They sat down with the cloth, man. They sat down with the cloth and rubbed it and shined it and made it look really, really great, man. Like, when I say hats off to the special effects team, the special effects team did their goddamn thing on this movie, man. Like, I'm telling you, bro, they spectacular job, man. And I can't, I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to see what they're going to do next. I mean, my favorite moment in the last body is probably going to end up being everybody's favorite moment. Um, I'm going to talk about what I didn't. What I didn't like is uh, one problem I have with this movie. Um, in the last in the last hour of this movie, the my favorite moment in that last battle is of course Captain America, Captain America wielding Mjolnir, right? That was an epic moment because it's supposed to happen. It's supposed to happen. We've seen it plenty times in the comic books. We know he's worthy. That's why he was able to move it a little bit in Age of Ultron, right? But if you don't know about the comics, you wouldn't know that he's able to wield Mjolnir. So that was pretty cool to see. He was kicking Captain America's ass. Um, not a great moment is when everybody showed up, when we thought, oh, man, man, no matter how many times they try to beat this dude, it's like he's just putting the beat down on everybody. They double team him, triple team him, quadruple team him, and he's still bodying these dudes out here. But when we thought everything was done, when he was down and out, man, and he brought the army down and everything, you know how Thanos loved to give his monologue speeches, right? Then I heard the radio, and I was there, and I was like, oh, snap. I heard an accent. I was like, oh, that sounds like Black Panther. Because up until this moment, we thought that I thought it was just going to be them against them. Because I wasn't even thinking. Because the movie fools you. It fools you into thinking that not everybody is back by the last hour. Because so many things are going on. They're starting to fight Thanos and everything. I was like, oh, why ain't nobody coming? You know, and then all of a sudden, you hear the radio after he beat Captain America's ass. You hear the radio, the radio come on, man. And it was Black Panther coming through. And then we saw him. And then you see the Doctor Strange magic circles start happening. Everybody come down. We got Scarlet Witch. We got Black Panther. All of um all of Wakanda. The the Warriors, the Lady Warriors. Um, I mean everybody, man. Uh just showed up it was it was very good um everybody came back the guardians of the galaxy Groot. i mean i'm talking about Groot. um Groot, um all of them came back star lord all of them came back it's pretty cool to see everybody on the battlefield at the same time um so it was like there it was like infinity war but on a bigger scale it was on a way bigger scale and he and this time it looks like it was a bigger army that they brought so it was pretty cool man because it was everything everything that you've seen man all the enemies the chitauri everything he brought everybody <laughs> from space to come fight this oh man when you're talking about um i was talking about the cg earlier and i didn't even mention um i didn't even mention valkyrie man how could i not mention the valkyrie of valkyries you know what i'm saying Oh man, she was awesome riding um I don't know, I call her Pegasus <laughs> because it's so awesome to see her riding that thing and they made it look flawless. It the thing it 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 looked like it belonged. I'm telling you, the way how they did this movie and the and the special effects in this movie is so good, you literally watching this movie thinking man this is something that could probably happen outside that's how your belief it, it pulls you in that's how powerful the special effects were like it pulls you into the world make you feel like you're in it i don't know maybe it's because i was watching it in treaty maybe i don't know <laughs> but maybe that's it but 
man, this movie was good. And it ended on a great note, but also very sad. And I'm happy. It started in the first movie with, with Iron Man saying, I am Iron Man. I'm, I mean, I was holding tears for some of the scenes in the movie, but that one broke me. It's not even when he he died, when he snapped. When he got a glove, snapped his finger, and 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 what when the scene with him and Pepper, like I broke when he said I am Iron Man before he snapped his finger, like it killed me. I wasn't even happy for the moment because I was just overwhelmed by emotions just right there because it's like it's like when he said that, like every single memory of all the movies. Of all the movies just came crashing down in my memory. And I just, I'm like, we're coming from so far 10 years ago, man. 10 years ago. And it's just, it's sad to see it. I mean, and we know the MCU is not over, but it's like the combination of everything. It just became overwhelming. And I, you know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't hold it back anymore. And then it started with him. And it ended with him, and it it was just awesome. I'm glad they did that. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about the A Force. Um, I know a lot of I know a lot of people is gonna be like, oh, look at this SJW moment right here when you saw all the women, um, trying um, trying to help to get the um to get the the Infinity Gauntlet away from every. <laughs> away from Thanos, as far away from Thanos, and it was like, oh, don't worry about it, he's got a lot to help, and all the women came on the screen and stuff, it's not an SJW moment, guys, it's, it's A-Force, <laughs> okay, if you're not, if you're not a comic book fan, you won't know about the A-Force, um, but it is, a, it, it's the A-Force, and it was awesome to see it like that, um, the A-Force is all women, it's like the women of, the women Avengers, but they call it A-Force, Okay, so don't get too much in your feelings. It's not a SJW moment. It's not a feminism moment. It's just a force, and they tried to represent that. Even though it was like they they were on screen for what like twenty seconds, it was still worth it to see that because that's maybe foretelling of things to come in the MCU, and I'm looking forward to it. I wouldn't mind seeing an A Force movie. I'm not going to lie. I wouldn't mind seeing it. Um, so I love the movie. I loved it. Um, I don't know if you guys want to rate it. You, my only qualm with this movie, I never said it. My only problem with this movie, the only problem I had with this movie was Hulk didn't get to shine at all. They gave us no Hulk again. Two movies. Two movies. Two movies, bro. And we get we get to see no Hulk. Are they tired of doing his his, his stuff of motion capturing him? Um, maybe it's too hard to do. I don't know. I wanted some Hulk in this movie. I wanted to see the Hulk versus Thanos rematch. I wanted to see that. They gave us nothing. I mean, I know he got hurt because he. He was the one that did the Infinity Gauntlet first when they just came back um, from getting the stones. I mean, he hurt his arm pretty bad, but it was it was just a silly excuse to not use him in the final battle. You know what I mean? I would have loved to see that. I think I I, I don't think it's more of I think it, I don't think it's like a con in the movie because the movie was great, well written, and everything well directed. I don't think it's like a con. Like, I'm not going to put it as a con. It's more of a disappointment. You know what I'm saying? It's more of a disappointment. So they're not going to lose points for that. Um, because this was a 10 out of 10 movie. Maybe even a 20 out of 10. So it's... I'm not going to take points away from the rating because of that. It's just a disappointment to me that they didn't use him better. Some great epic moments in that last battle, man. Um, as I said, greatest moment is Captain America wielding M Mjolnir. <laughs> Thor is like, I knew it. I knew you were worthy. <laughs> right? So I'm glad he wasn't salty. Um, I'm glad they didn't make him like salty about it. Um, because he was trying to wield um, 
he was trying to wheel both. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What is it? Is it, it, called Stormbreaker, right? So, <sighs> my God, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've actually read a comic book, but I, I, I know it. I know the lore. I know the lore, and sometimes I do mess up with names and. Sometimes I do mess up with remembering certain things that happen. I know this is a whole new universe and some things are just not going to happen the same. Um, Because they're building, it's like a, it's like a different story on its own. But we knew it happened. I'm glad they they did it. I'm glad they did it and they did it their own way. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm happy about it, man. This movie was great. Awesome. Hope you guys, um... Hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I do because you shouldn't be watching this spoiler review if you have not seen the movie. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed my review. Uh, it's my first review on the channel. Hopefully um, you guys support it. Watch it when you can. Make sure you watch this after. Why am I saying this at the end? You, sh you shouldn't be watching this if you have not seen the movie because I talk way too much about it. <laughs> anyways guys thank you guys for watching as always man i know you guys are going to support this as soon as you get to see it if you're a comic book fan even if you're not a comic book fan you should go see this movie god damn it go see the movie it's it's movie magic man it's movie magic i think this is one of the greatest movies of all time it's i'm not gonna put it up there it's a great movie but dark knight is still my favorite superhero movie of all time um just because of Heath Ledger's performance in that movie. Just because of that. Like, don't get me wrong. Robert Downey Jr. did a great job in this movie. Deserves. I think he, in a, I think he deserves. That's just in my opinion. I think he deserves at least a nomination for, for lead actor in this movie. I think he deserves a nomination for lead actor, um, in, in um for next year's oscars i think he deserves that i think he deserves at least that i know he won't win <laughs> i know he won't win because they don't they don't like superhero movies like that um heath ledger did win best supporting best supporting um actor for dark knight um and he deserved it he deserved it. Um, but I, I just, if I should say Heath Ledger did 10, if he got a 10 out of 10, I would say, I, I would give Tony a 9.5 out of 10. And that's where, that's why I'm saying there's an edge. I think that that performance is just legendary by Heath, by Heath Ledger. So um, don't get mad because I'm talking about DC movies. Because let's just enjoy it for what it is. I love DC. I love Marvel. Okay. I just think DC is just they're just trash right now when it comes on to making movies like they got i enjoyed aquaman and i enjoyed wonder woman that's the only two they have under their belt that that was actually good and it wasn't anything like this so <laughs> tells you a lot right so i mean justice league was just trash anyways thank you guys for watching as always man um you guys know what to do hit that like button let me know what you think in the comment section. And of course, subscribe if you have not subscribed. There's more movie reviews to come. I'm going to start reviewing movies. I told you guys that this was going to be the first one on the channel because I wanted to start it off with something huge, something big. Um, so there you go. I'm about to go now and record some reactions. So thank you guys for watching. As always, it's your boy Terry by Reacts. Peace.